now that we've done our first initial, we fired it up, we've got everything, we checked a bunch of data, nothing crazy. We've got it plugged in. I showed you guys how to do that, how to set up some basic settings for things you actually want to see. Now it comes into what happens if it just ain't perfect when you did it the first time? Well, we've done the quick checks. So we got battery voltage, TPS, IAC map, actual AFR target. Those are really good ones to start with. Maybe not for super advanced tuning, but for most people that's doing this stuff in the driveway on a weekend, this is definitely the way to go. We got troubleshooting connection data issues. So here's the thing. If you have an older computer and you're running older software and you're using one of the new CAN cables like this, sometimes it doesn't like to do a little handshake right here. So you may have to find another laptop that has Windows 10 or Windows 11 and you want a USB 2.0 or 3.0 port because if the data isn't transferring at the right speed back and forth, it could kind of give it a little bit of a headache, honestly, because it's a little bit too slow. So it kind of internally slows itself down and times out because of the bold rate or what have you not. But cannot connect right there. That's an important one. Try a different USB port. If, if my tuning friends out there know, if you've ever had one of these strapped in the right seat of a go fast car and you drop your laptop and it smashes the USB, that port probably ain't gonna work anymore. So you might have to get the Type-C adapter, try it on the other side, try it on one of the other ports. Uh, one of these ports does not work on this computer because of that exact reason. Oh, actually, no, that's my other tuning computer. This one works. I haven't broken it yet. But yeah, so if it's not connecting at all, you know, make sure your USB port is good to go and make sure you have the key on because if it's still not connecting, I'll show what that looks like in the software right here. Let's try to connect the ECU. So we're plugged in, it's trying to communicate, but there's no power on the ECU side. If there's no power over here, it could be your switch 12 volt having an issue. You could have a bad fuse somewhere. You could have something funny hooked up, confusing the 12 volt signal wire. So yeah, no connection. So if we do that, verify, both blue lights are on. There's no red light right here. Let's see if we absolutely, yeah, see it's connecting, connected successfully, doing good. So that's one of the first things, and that's a common, common thing of people not doing it right. They'll, they'll do some funny things. They'll get like a phone charging cable, they'll plug it into the USB port, and then what they'll do is, where did it go? They'll plug it, plug it in right here in the top of this. Now, other systems out there in the wilds, they actually do communicate this way. This is just an update port. This is a maintenance service port, so you can put data on, take data off, but it does not do CAN communication. That's only through the CAN cable that it does it. So if you're trying to plug it in there, it ain't going to work right because it does not have this little thing right here with a chipset in it that's going to tell it this can signal to USB so this program can talk to it. So that's a, kind of a common thing. There's actually, there's a few of those out there that does that. Uh, no handheld power. I put handheld power in there because it's kind of related to the same thing. If you're trying to do this with your handheld or your laptop and it's not communicating, even if your computer's not communicating, the handheld's not communicating, you need to come all the way back to the system and make sure all these pins are in good health, especially on this side. Make sure there's not anything. Like if you look down in here, make sure all the pins are in. If you're worried about connection, just take a pick and pull the rubber out and make sure all the, all the wires are connected. If there is a problem, obviously give us a call, but make sure this is in good contact. Make sure your fuses are good. Make sure your ECU is powering up. Make sure your ignition switch 12 volt is good because all those things will make it not talk to the handheld and not talk to the computer itself. Sensor data missing right here. Sometimes, you know, this is a little bit more broad spectrum to what I typed in a document, but sometimes what happens is you have an issue with your computer security that messes with how much traffic that USB can have. So it's gonna put a whole lot of limiters on, you know, how much data it can import. You could have an issue with the firmware on your ECU, or you could have an issue with the computer itself or with the software. If you're connecting and you're missing a lot of data, make sure you're on the right selection block uh, when it comes into the sensor information right here. So we'll go back over there. I'll show you that right fast. So make sure you are populating this area if it's data you wanna see in there. If not, make sure to go over here to the settings and just select the right one you're looking for. Because sometimes it's just not in there. Sometimes you have to go over here and add in the thing you wanna see. So we throw that in there, right? With 
this, the next one is layouts not visible. So what happens is whenever you make a layout for like a kill shot, a jackpot, a joker, wild card, or whatever system you have, every time you go in here, your layout for the kill shot two will now have this information. So after you populate this and do it, this information will be there. So whenever I change systems to something else, we'll cruise over here and we'll go, this is wild, that's a good one. Well, see, it's all fresh. There's no, there's no custom boxes or anything else. So let's go over here. See, there's not going to be a, you know, Aces filming thing over here. Let's go back over to the Kill Shot 2. Because every system tunes a little bit differently. You use different parameters for different things. Even though it's all a whole lot the same when it comes to the software side of stuff, you may be tuning a kill shot fusion just a little bit different than you, kill, than you tune a kill shot two or a deuces wild or a joker. So we come over here and see our all of our custom configurations we set up is still in place. So that's an important thing to know that you may have the wrong software selected. Also, if you delete the software and then reinstall the software, all that stuff will disappear as well. So no worries if you close it out and then bring it back up because it'll still be there. Oh, look, there's our guide. I'm happy to write these guides for you. But the next steps, you're going to go into your basic fuel tuning, which we're going to make the next video about that. All the spark verification and spark tuning, all those basic things. And we're going to get a little bit more in-depth into data logging. And don't forget, everybody, ASUS really is just for the people. That's the new definition of it, after all.